Hello there, good day. Welcome to this JavaScript generators and coroutine tutorial. Let's talk about coroutines. Coroutines are made up of two words, co which means cooperative and routines are called functions. So coroutines are the functions which doesn't run to completion and can be stopped and resumed during execution. Sound, it sounds interesting, so let's see it. First, let's understand what is the meaning of run to completion. Let's say I have three functions a, b, c and a main function calling a, b and c. When the function a calls is being called, the function a completes before the control comes back to main. When you call function b, same thing happens with function b. It comes back before the calls complete. Same thing happens with function c. It has to complete before the main can proceed further. Since every function completes, it's called run to completion. Now, what are coroutine? What are different over here? Let's say I'm having a function a which does 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. But between 1, 2 and 3, there is something called yield. And between 2 and 3, there is yield and between 3 and 4, there is yield. What is it mean for? Let's see. So from the main, let's start it as from the main, I am calling function a. Then function a executes 1 and 2 and that, then it encounters something called yield which means that control will go back to main function and it will execute a and b and when the uh, it executes a and b it calls the co continue to the next then function a will resume its, its execution from where it left not from the beginning it does activity 3 and it yield it again which means the control will return back to the main function it will do c and then man, main function says that do the next thing. It goes, a control again goes back to function A and it does 4, 5 and ultimately function exits and returns back to the main and it calls D and it all exits. So you can see there is multiple to and flow between two functions and they are not running to completion. They can be stopped and resumed within in between. So they, these are called coroutines. In JavaScript, coroutines are implemented using what we call as generators. So you more hear the term generators than coroutines in the beginning. But coroutines, uh, you can say generators are a subset of coroutines. So now it's coding time. So what we will learn in this video. Number one, how to code coroutines using generators. Number two, how to pass around values. And number three, which you are going to use more often than not is using promises with generators. So let's go and see the code. Now we'll start with a run to completion function. Let me run this code and it says, it prints before, then it's called this function. The function execute one, two, and then it prints after over here. So you can see that there is no way to break this function once the execution goes here. Now this is the place where coroutines comes into picture, but we need to do some different syntax over here. To convert a normal JavaScript function into a coroutine function, we'll say function star. Okay. Star is a kind of generator syntax came, came with ES6, which converts a normal function into a generator function. Let me save this. It looks like a pointer, but it's not a function pointer because there is no pointer in JavaScript. You can put it like this or this it doesn't make a difference. So let me just clear it and run it. Did you notice a difference? It says before and after, which means this function, even if I'm calling it over here, it didn't get called because when I convert a function into a generator function, it returns an iterator and not calls the function immediately. So it returns a something called iterator. Okay. Okay. Now again, I call it's the same behavior because it returns the iterator, but doesn't calls the function. To call the function, we have to call something called iterator dot next. Next will trigger this function. So when now you run it, you can see before, one and two and after. And this next iterator can be triggered even later point of time in your program. So here before, after and then one to get sprinted. So you can actually pass a generator around and um, calls it whenever you like in your program. Now coming back to this something called yield. I say yield. So uh, let me put it back over here. Let me go ahead and run this program and you will see that it calls before, fine. It calls one, fine. Then it's yielded the function, which means it stopped the execution of function over here and it returns over here. And it's 
prints after it doesn't go back there okay we'll just see how these things happen but this is the way it happens now uh, i can actually let's say print three and i'll again yield okay so this iterator dot next calls this function okay uh, let's ex try to understand it in this particular way this iterator dot next calls this function okay this yields returns the control over here okay now let's go back and see that and to resume the function from here i have to call iterator next again so let me call the next again okay again it yields it will come back here to again make it run i'll call next again so let me just print some break in between okay and now i'm go ahead and run this program so it will look difficult but it is not i'll explain now so this returns an iterator that is correct this returns an iterator when i say iterator dot next it calls the function from here when this yields happen the control comes back here when I again say iterator dot next, the execution of this function starts over here. When this yields happen, it again comes back over here. And when I say iterator next again, it again goes back and start it from here and complete the function. So that's why it works. You can see before one, after break and then three. This is the sequence it looks like. Okay. So that's the way you can yield and resume the function. So you might be thinking that's all. No, there are many more things on this. What about I am not yielding blind thing. I am yielding some value call 100 from here or 200 from here. How, it will, how will I receive the value? Well, it seems that iterator next returns the value. So I'll say net uh, ret value equal to iterator next. Here also I'll say ret value equal to iterator next. Here also I'll say ret value equal to iterator next. Let me save and run the code. And I'll actually, let me print it. So ret value is an object. The value return is actually ret value dot value. Okay, we'll see the object also. But for a time being, let me just use this. this. I'll just copy it here again and put it here. Okay. Now I am going to run the code. So you can see that the return value 100, 200 and undefined is printed over here. Again, I'll say why. When this first yield happen, this comes here and returns the value. Second yield happen comes here and return the value. And last function end returns it over here. Since we are not returning anything from the function, it is saying undefined. And if we can, if we, let's say if we just return from the function, let's say uh, how much? 300. I return 300 and if I run the code again, it will show 300 being returned over here. Okay. So that's the way we can return the function, uh, values from the function. Now, let's understand the logic again. These things just returns an iterator it doesn't calls the function this iterator dot next it calls the function now yield can be considered as a return value of function start from here which ends here and this return value comes to whichever return type it is there okay now again when i am calling iterator dot next it executes just like a maybe you can consider it a new function over here and yield is again a return value which comes here and returned here similarly this this guy calls this and return function comes and returns here sorry here rate value okay so that's the way a message exchange can also happen with the yield okay now it's good to receive the value over here but can i send back the value also of course why not so let me say just like i am um, let's say some y value equal to yield and let me print uh, uh, 
y value equal to y value i'll just print it over here again y value and i'll take y value from here y value equal to int again i'll say y value equal to no it's written so just like i can iterate dot, dot next can give me value from function i can pass the value to the function also okay so first iterate dot next nothing will happen so i just like i am passing uh, getting the value from this function to this function in the middle i can do the reverse also so this iterator dot next calls here it is not receiving anything but this yield is actually giving me 100 okay but this yield is also waiting for calling me next so that it can move over here so in this next i can call let's say minus one next iterator i can call minus two and if i go ahead and run the program you can see minus one comes here minus two goes here so how it works now this is the beginning this calls the function over here okay now yield breaks the function it returns 100 which comes to return value of this guy here now when i am calling the iterator next this iterator next break this yields so that it can continue but the return value but the value which i am passing it over here goes here similarly for 200 this thing breaks the starts the function from here and whatever value i am sending it it is being received here that's why i can receive the value now you can see that we can not only uh, stop and re-execute the function uh, functions in the middle but we can also exchange values around just like we are passing return value and so on so this is not only it i'll tell you one more thing this rate value as I, I said is an object so let's say let me print the object not the rate value itself and i'll just uh, comment it for a while because we know how it works okay so you can see the object is saying value 100 203 important thing is this it's a done is equal to false means the function is not completed yet done is equal to true means function is actually completed so if you yield at the last one it will not be completed you have to call the next again to get it done okay so if you if you will have to call the next again maybe i'm not saying any parameter and let's see it then okay now here since we are returning nothing values undefined done is equal to true so it's better to do last as return we are not yielding the last thing we return it because we will get it and will mark the return marks the function as complete and like yield which doesn't mark the function as complete so looks interesting but that's the basics of it so we said in the beginning of this code that the coroutines are cooperative function right so how does functions cooperate uh, okay uh, let's get rid of this and even this uh, okay even this so i am calling this um, iterator let iterator equal to rtc that's fine now uh, let's not call this i'll just call this yield or let it be and i'll just instead of returning i'll just print this y value okay now i am saying uh, when i have to start calling this i'll say iterator dot next will call this function and if i am taking some value its value will be written as 100 okay now this yield 100 let's say I, it can be a function so um, let me create a function called xyz and let's say its rate returns this is from function okay and i call it like xyz okay and i can say console.log rate value 
now clear the code and say you can see the value returns as this is from fn done it's false because function is not completed yet okay it is it have we have to call next again okay to call it this log y value so uh, now here i am calling the function but it's possible to return the function itself in that case i'll if i just say ret value dot value and i can call this function and see it's the same thing it's calling the function so i'm returning the function not the output of the function which is great now the last thing is about which most of you likely to use it using promise let's say this function returns promise okay with function resolve reject okay let's say this uh, uh, xyz function takes some value and it says that if value is greater than for example 100 it say resolve uh, let's say success or i say else reject saying is failure and so this xyz is now returning a promise uh, what will happen over here is that this rate value dot value is a promise which means i can do a den over here and say and can say function param okay or i can also say catch and this is the same thing so if it is a success case then i can return iterator dot next as uh, pass or we can say iterator dot next as fail and let's see and run the code i have to write return new promise sorry about that i missed it it says fail because uh, i am not passing anything so uh, let me pass let's say 50 or 500 is success let's say and say pass and if i say 50 uh, it's a fail so what happens over here is that i am just see it i am returning a promise over here okay it's yield that promise comes here and based on the execution of promise i am passing either pass or fail to this function where y value is the return of either pass or fail or whatever next i am passing and it prints that particular value okay so it was a slightly longer video than i expected so i hope you i was able to explain the usage of generators and coroutines if you have any questions feel free to ask me in comment i'll try to answer it Thanks a lot guys. Thanks for watching. Please do not forget to subscribe. Thank you. See you in the next. See you next time. Bye.